Hello, it's Jan Beta, and today I'm having a little bit of an un unboxing. This is a little package I received some days ago, and it contains a lot of Amiga goodness, hopefully. There's supposed to be two Amigas in there. One is supposedly working and the other one isn't. So let's see what's in there. Okay. So, there are two Amigas in there. And yeah, this one seems to look as if it is working. Doesn't even have the processor in there. The keyboard's in there as well. Nice. Yeah, seems to. Yeah, some keys missing there, but otherwise in nice condition, I guess. The trapdoor for the door on the back of the case. Another trapdoor for the other Amiga, I guess. And there's the other Amiga, and it comes with a dust cover, which is nice, because these are not so easy to get these days. And what else? A whole lot of stuff, judging from the photo. Uh, this is an external disk drive, the original A1010, I think, is the model number. But there's no drive in there, it's only the case, so let's see what else. A lot of packaging material, a bag of chips. I guess it's all the ICs from the broken Amiga in here whole bunch of stuff, even the processor and stuff like that. I doubt that all of this is broken. Maybe the person uh, ripped it apart to sell the parts or to keep the spare parts. Oh, a joystick adapter. Two joysticks on one part, I think. An original Amiga mouse. Nice. What's this? Another... Oh, and another joystick cable. And these things, which are TV modulators for the Amiga 500, or for all Amigas with an RGB out, I think. Two of those. They are quite crap, but yeah, they sell for quite a, quite a bit on eBay, so maybe I could sell those and have all the money I spent on this. This is the, the front cover of the A1010 drive. Quite nice condition. An Amiga drive. Maybe it's the inside of the 1010, but I'm not sure. It looks like an internal A500 drive. The power supply for an A500. It's the heavy version, which is the old version. Not as good as the light version, which is quite more modern and has a switching power supply in it. And this looks like a RAM expansion with the old... Um, RF shielding on there. I wonder if that's still alright. Maybe we'll have to do some refurbishing there. And a switch on the bottom of the box here. So yeah. Nice haul I would say. Let's check out the Amiga that's supposed to be working here. And yeah, I'm connecting the power supply. I'm using one of my working ones here that I know are good so I don't break anything else that isn't already broken. So the drive spins up, you hear the ticking every two seconds, but the power LED doesn't seem to work so first thing I tried was to um, reverse the little plug which normally leads to a state where the Amiga can't boot at all because um, some of the timing circuits are in the keyboard circuitry, I guess, for reset and boot up. Yeah, but that wasn't the problem here. So let's check a little further. At least it seems to work. Yeah, caps lock also works. The LEDs don't work. At least the power LED, the um, drive LED 
wouldn't come on if you don't insert a disk. What I also realized inspecting these, this Amiga is that the previous owner inserted a screw that was much too big in the bottom cover. So yeah, I basically tried to get it out and the only way to get it out was by hitting it with a hammer, as you can see here. But that did the trick. And yeah, the main board fit in there quite a lot better after I removed the screw and fitted a proper one that really fit in there. So I refitted the disk drive. And yeah, that was the part that was connected with the screw that was much too large for the case. And then I reattached the keyboard to the main board and into the case to then go on and test it again. And I have connected this through one of the um, A520 adapters, the TV modulators, to my laptop basically to a USB video capturing stick so I can see the picture. And as you can see, it's a Kickstart 1.2. And yeah, it seems to work. It just shows the boot screen of the Amiga, which is, yeah, it looks as if it's my laptop, but it's really the picture the Amiga outputs. Trust me there. So yeah, at least the basic functionality is there. So let's see if the other drive that came with it is working. And yeah, I'm just swapping the drives. It seems to be that it's another internal Amiga 500 drive and not the um, A1010, which has a slightly different form factor and doesn't have the standoffs on the bottom there that you can see on these ones. So let's see if this boots a disk. There's a disk that was inserted there when I got it, but yeah, there's nothing on it, at least nothing bootable. So let's check with another one, one of my own disks here. I have a little, I made a little workbench disc already to check these Amigas. Yeah, and the drive LED even works. It's rattling around quite a bit, but seems to be functional. So I just love the Amiga disc drive sound, quite unique, if you ask me. Brings back a lot of memories. So I've closed the case now and as you can see the LED, the power LED works, but yeah, it has kind of a loose contact there. I have to fix that later, I guess. And it's the nice red variety. The later ones had a green power LED and an orange drive LED, I think. The older Amigas had a red power LED and a green drive LED, which is much nicer in my opinion. And this is the um, A501 um, RAM ex expansion that came in this really big RF shielding case, full metal. So let's take that apart and see if it looks any good from the inside. Yeah, so it's a bit crusty and 
I think there's a battery on the other side of the board, which has most probably leaked because these things are made in 1987 or something like that. So yeah, there it is. The big blue thing there is the battery. And as you can see in the RF shielding, there's a lot of um, stuff leaked out of the battery there and most probably damaged some traces on the circuit board. So we'll have to take a look at this and yeah, otherwise it looks quite well. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there. So now here's the interesting part. All these ICs that just came in this little um, bag here. And yeah, these are all the special chips of the Amiga. I think the person who owned this just ripped the second Amiga apart. There seems to be a kickstart. Uh, yeah, this seems to be a kickstart switch, switching board for having multiple kickstart ROMs in there for compatibility with um, older software or newer software. Depends on f from where you're looking. These, yeah, I don't know, there's nothing, not much to see there. Maybe, yeah, this is the 68,000 processor with all the band pins. Uh, I guess this would be still working if I can reattach it to the board and maybe maybe the board is broken. I'll have to inspect that later. Well, this is a beautiful chip, beautiful processor. A little switching board here. It's all band pins and stuff like that because it was just thrown into the bag basically. So here's an interesting Amiga mouse variety. And it has these um, etched connector there, which I think it belongs to an Amiga 2000 or at least to some desktop model. The joystick adapter where you can you can insert two joysticks or a mouse and a joystick at the same time to one port, I guess. The front cover of the A1010 drive, which is in very nice condition, I must say. And the case of the 1010 with all the, um, yeah, the circuit board still in there. Looks all right, I guess. So maybe I can insert another drive there and use it as an external drive still. Should be possible, I guess. There. So let's check if the mouse that came with it still works. I don't have a mouse pad here at the moment, but I guess I'll just um, try it out. And at the same time, I'll try out the extension cord that came with uh, the thing here. Just connect it to the mouse and boot up the workbench again. Yeah, let's try and move the mouse pointer there. There we go. Can't see it because I'm standing in the way, but the mouse pointer moves. It's not very nice on this uh, blanket I have here, but it sure works. Maybe some cleaning would be nice. Yeah, so that's my Amiga haul. All in all, I paid 50 euros for this delivered, which is quite nice for two Amigas and all that stuff, even though it's in quite horrible condition, at least parts of it. Parts of it are working just fine. So yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Thanks for watching, I'm in beta. See you next time. Bye.